Adults often tell me that they're impressed with everything I've accomplished as a young LGBTQ youth advocate and ally. But <laughs> among us right now is a youth ambassador who has been able to do so much in her advocacy career. Jazz Jennings has been raising awareness about the transgender community and transgender youth in particular since she was six years old. I don't know what you were doing at six years old, but I certainly wasn't getting interviewed on national television. <laughs> since then, Jazz and her family have become nationally known for her story, and they have shown adults across the country what it means to be supportive of the transgender children and youth. Please give your attention to the screen so that we can le learn a little bit more about this incredible individual. Hi. When we first met Jazz in 2007, she was only six years old and one of the youngest documented cases of an early transition from male to female. I thought that I was made wrong, but now I know there's nothing wrong with me. I'm, I love myself. I'm a confident, per, a confident person and that's how I feel about myself. From the beginning, I think I was oblivious to the whole notion altogether, it was probably a denial of my ability to accept the general notion that a child could be transgender. After I got past that and the resistance, it, I came to, to truly believe that her true essence was that she was a girl and that I had to get past any preconceived notion of what I had about things and just support her. I was so happy just to be myself. Happy birthday! Really, for the first time, we said to our friends, our community, society, that we were going to allow jazz to be jazz. And it was an opportunity for jazz to go out into the community and say, I am jazz. When she was little, she would always hang out with Ari and she would never hang out with us. She was always playing Barbies and we were like, Whoa, what? Just turned out that she's now a girl, and I'm very happy about that. I never have thought so like, I miss my baby brother because she never was my baby brother. It was always a, a little girl, and I just always saw her as a girl. It used to be challenging at school because I wasn't allowed to use the girls' bathroom, but now my mom went to the school board and she got that law fixed. Her records now state that she's a female, which is a wonderful thing. I'm like so excited about that. To start middle school with her record stating she's a female is huge. There are many people with sad stories and where they go through things like getting beat up or maybe discriminated and they don't have the support, so they're by themselves. I'm Jazz, um, a transgender child. Um, I'm turning 11 this week, like my mom said and I just love my life and I love my mom. In fact, the audience loves her. She's charming and she's got charisma and she's so cute. Hey everyone, it's Jazz and today I'm going to be talking about my new book that was released on September 4th. And it's basically about my life starting from the time I was two years old. And it shows how I transitioned to become a girl and become my true self. I am Jazz. For as long as I can remember, my favorite color has been pink. I tell people that I have a girl brain, a boy body. I think like a girl, but I have the different parts. I told Jazz that I thought she was so lucky to have parents like you and your husband because as we know, a lot of parents just wouldn't accept this in a child. It was kind of hard for me because I didn't want to be a boy. A girl is how being a girl is more comfor comfortable for me and that's who I wanted to be. And I'm so glad that I have amazing parents and I'm a girl now. You just have to be proud of who you are and have confidence because you are beautiful no matter what. Yes. <laughs> 
please give a very warm welcome to Jazz Jennings. Thrive, I was absolutely ecstatic. Well, for those of you who don't know me, even though there was just a video, I am a typical 14-year-old girl. I love to hang out with my friends, I love to play soccer and tennis, draw and write stories, make silicone mermaid tales, and most of all, I love to binge watch TV shows on my laptop. <laughs> oh, and I also just happen to be transgender. To be clear, that last point is not a negative. Being transgender makes me special and has helped to shape the person that I am today. I'm proud of the way I am, and I wish all transgender kids could embrace their uniqueness like I do. I share my story so that my message of loving yourself and knowing that it's okay to be different can be spread everywhere. <laughs> When I was born, I was assigned male on my birth certificate. But from the moment I could express myself, I acted very feminine. I was drawn to anything sparkly, pretty, and girlish. No one told me that these preferences were stereotypical girl behaviors. I mean, what toddler in diapers even knows the word stereotypical? <laughs> I just knew what I liked, and I expressed that right from the start. When I was younger, I was nothing like my older twin brothers or my dad. I wanted to be exactly like my mom and my older sister. I was forever raiding my sister's Jessup chest and her closet. And you could always find me dolled up like a mermaid or princess, wearing wigs, beaded necklaces, and those plastic high heels. You know, the ones that cost a fortune at the Disney store. Yeah. But don't get me wrong, I still love the Disney store. Yeah. <laughs> when I was three years old, I called myself Sparkles as a nickname. And I know what you're thinking, it sounds like a name you'd give a dog or something, but it made me spe it was special to me and made me happy. Um, it was at this time that I began insisting that I was a girl. I wasn't just a boy who liked girly things, I knew I was a girl. At first my parents thought it was a cute passing phase, but as time went by, they knew it was something much more serious. My parents are pretty cool people and are very proactive. They took me to specialists, and when I was three, I was diagnosed with what's now called gender dysphoria. They were told not to encourage or discourage my behavior, but to simply follow my lead. And at that time, they had no idea the adventure they were about to embark upon. <laughs> at the time, I was just in preschool, and we were already met with the resistance of the school administration. This was the early 2000s. There was a lot of ignorance regarding trans people in general, but transgender preschoolers were unheard of. As kindergarten approached, my parents knew it would be harmful to my mental well-being to force me to conform and start elementary school as a boy. In anticipation of resistance from the school administration and to pr protect my rights, my parents called a meeting with the principal months before the 2006 school year was set to begin. They came in prepared with an attorney and my doctor by their sides. To say the very conservative school principal wasn't ready for me is quite an understatement. <laughs> she couldn't wrap her mind around the idea of what she thought was a little boy attending her school as a girl. She was adamantly opposed to me starting school as a girl and was very, and was very big on the general neutral concept and suggested that I start school with no pronouns. So basically, in her mind, I would be an it. And on top of that, she wanted me to dress gender neutral. <coughs> Since my school had uniforms, she suggested I stick with pants and shorts. Her ideas were completely unacceptable, and after much pressure, she finally conceded to allow me to use female pronouns. Yay, I can finally say that I'm a real girl, <coughs> sort of like a female Pinocchio. <laughs> we met her halfway with the uniform policy, and we settled on me being allowed to wear skorts. None of these were compromises any parent should have to make, but this was uncharted territory. The only area we couldn't get her to budge on were the dreaded bathrooms. 
In my elementary school, each classroom had one gender-neutral bathroom with no locks, so basically anyone could walk in on you. How scary for a kid like me, can you imagine? Then there was a campus bathroom that was designated male and female. These were used a lot when the kids went to lunch, PE, art, media, and music. These were the bathrooms that I was banned from. When I wasn't in my classroom, the school administration so kindly allowed me to use the nurse's bathroom in which kids came in vomiting or had fevers, stomach aches, bad cuts, and bloody noses. As you can imagine, I was horrified to use this infirmary restroom. As a result, I would hold my bladder and I often had accidents. I'd also sneak into the girls' bathroom when I thought no one would notice, until the day I got caught. I was reprimanded by the school librarian. I was told that I'd be sent to the principal if I tried to sneak in again. Can you imagine getting in trouble for using the bathroom? I mean, wow. At the time, my parents were busy fighting for my right to play girls travel soccer and decided to pick their battles and put the bathroom issue on hold for a few years. They were just grateful that I was allowed to attend school as my true gender. Fortunately, by the time I was in fifth grade, we got a new principal and our school board passed a policy to protect the rights of all gender non-conforming students. I was happy to finally pee in peace. <laughs> I'm happy to say that I'm now in middle school and the administration is on board 100%. My wonderful principal made it clear that I'd always be treated like all the other girls. I use the girls' bathroom and even the locker rooms. I play on the girls' team in sports and I can wear what all the other girls wear. And our dean of discipline has my back as well. I have a ton of friends and we go out to the movies, play soccer, and try to perfect our hair and makeup. We do what all kids do. Every now and then there will be that one kid who gives me a, ruck, a rough time and teases me behind my back. And then they are sent to Mr. L's office, who is the Dean of Discipline. And believe me, people, you do not want to ever go to Mr. L's office. <laughs> I consider myself a lucky kid now. There are adults in my school that support me and that I can turn to if I need something. I have incredible resources that many kids like me don't have. But back when I was younger, things could have been a lot better. Genuine non-conforming kids need adults like you to advocate for them. Every school district in the country should have a policy protecting kids like me. Please. Please keep in mind that close to 50% of trans youth will attempt suicide by the time they are 21. Each of you has the power to lower these statistics. I'm sure you have all heard about the tragic death of Leela Alcorn. In her suicide note, she pleaded, gender needs to be taught about in schools. The earlier, the better. Yeah. Please remember Leela when you have a student who is struggling with gender identity issues. Be a mentor, make them feel safe, have an open door policy. I'm only one person, but I'm here as a voice of transgender youth everywhere. And by speaking today, my message will spread from you to others. That's why you have to do everything in your power to fight for our right to be treated equally, to be supported, and to be respected for who we are. Thank you everyone for being here. It means so much to me that you gave up a weekend to come here to learn better ways to support LGBTQ students. Knowing that at least one adult cares can make all the difference in the world to transgender youth. Be that person. You can make a difference and change a life forever. Thank you.